Good evening, I'm a stuck up British bloke ready to present to you Prosh News. You may be wondering what Prosh News is and I am here to provide you some of our best works in the past year so that you may understand the gravity of our work. The nation agrees to not tell Tasmania about the end of COVID travel restrictions. White House removes school crockery amid China concerns by a literal cabinet. Gay marriage on thin fucking ice as North Queensland crocodile related deaths rise. Welcome to Prosh News. I'm a scantily clad lad in a suit. Tonight's top story. Do British people still talk like that when no one else is around? Tonight we got me, Spinkle Dookle Fookleberry, ready to report to you on this important story. I mean seriously, we know that no one still talks like that, so this brave reporter tried to find out. I started by stalking my British friend, Brabbledy Duke Baldersnatch, upon Thames III. He has this weird accent when talking around you, saying schedule and Tuesday and still referring to our God-granted country of Australia as the colonies. Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. So the other day I followed him to his Subiaco home and tried to figure out if it was an all that. As he retreated inside, I took a hiding place near one of his windows, my ear near the glass, hoping to hear him. Among his massive piles of tea, crumpets and marmite, taken off its top hat, monocle and three-piece suit, he proclaimed, Ah, oh, fuck, I'm chuffed. I don't have to put on that damn cunt voice anymore. Bloody oath. I'm happy to say that I have found the truth. Journalism has never been braver. Government anti-drug ads inadvertently make drugs seem cool. Local man wants you to know he's straight. He doesn't have anything against gay people, but he just wants you to know. Primary school principals in consensus that Yellow House is absolutely dog shit. Hello. I am an alcoholic frog, and in today's riveting news story, how war is Luke. We are closer than ever to determining the exact temperature of Luke. An unprecedented new study claims a team of researchers at the University of Winchester, led by Dr. D. Kelvin, have recently published the result of their five-year highly specialized experiment, the implications of which are groundbreaking. For decades, scientists have been searching after the elusive loop so that they may take this temperature and settle the century's old conundrum once and for all. How war is lukewarm? It may not seem obvious at first, but the lack of answers to this question has held humanity back to much larger degree than religion did in the Dark Ages. But this endeavor has proven to be difficult. Even after centuries of scientific effort, many Lukes were found, and none were the right one. However, it appears that scientists were looking in all the wrong places. Their approach was flawed. Dr. Kelvin told Prush in an interview. They were looking for THE Luke. They never thought instead to find an average of all Lukes. That is what we have done here. Using state-of-the-art quantum measurement devices. <laughs> and cutting-edge statistical mechanics and data analysis techniques. Kelvin's team were able to determine an upper and lower limit of 135 degrees Celsius, respectively. This brings scientists one step closer to determining the exact temperature of lukewarm, after which the field of physics will be thrust into a new age of discovery and technology that has hereto been considered impossible to achieve. Like bringing my children back, 
I see you, Karen. Just because I'm an alcoholic frog doesn't mean you can take away my damn kids. While it may be the case that Luke Temperature is susceptible to a certain degree of uncertainty, that is a question for another lifetime. Further research into this field will have unprecedented effects on the STEM industry and perhaps even the human race. Although the question still remains as to the exact temperature of Luke, Dr. Kelvin's team study has revived a long frustrated field and set a strong precedent for more work to be done in pursuit of an answer. Dr. Kelvin comments. You just have to look for answers outside the box. I've been taking comedy classes in my spare time. Middle East implies the existence of a right and left east. Cold Chisel has been renamed to Warm Chisel. Good evening. I am furry vision expert in trainee reporting to you live from the Prosh studio. In tonight's top story, Transperth introduces a new concession policy. Find out more if you stay tuned. We all know Transperth governs all public transport sessions in this burgeoning multicultural metropolis of Perth. A difficult and important job. They have already been given special authoritative powers by the WA police to apprehend anyone they deem to be breaking the law, flouting their rules, or just bothering them in any way. Without them, transport around Perth would never be as fast or orderly as it is. In a revolutionary move, Transperth has decided that all tertiary students carrying a concession card must be ready to present their passports, birth certificate, firearms license, and gene sequence at any time whilst taking a train, bus, or even ferry. This is a response to the skyrocketing levels of student fare fraud documented in the most recent transport statistics. These changes have been implemented as of last week. Anyone who failed to present the required documentation at the last ticket check has been identified as travelling under false pretenses and will be shot on site by a trained Transperth sniper next time they set foot on the Transperth property. Transperth representatives refused to comment on these new measures, instead screaming at the reporters to present their birth certificates and their parents' marriage certificates. Prosh is organising a fundraising drive that will go towards hospital bills for the brave reporters who are unfortunately shot trying to obtain information for this article. <laughs> it is in Prosh's best interest to keep all their riders safe and we apologize to any affected families. At this point in time, our writers have decided not to sue the paper for harm in the line of duty, which wouldn't have been a problem anyway because we've definitely insured all of our staff. If you would like to donate any money to the wounded, please do so via the GoFucker page down below. Transperth shot our reporter at gofuckme.com.au. <laughs> this has been your best trainee expert, Furry Vision. Good evening. I am a really obnoxious teenager wearing a tie, bringing you the latest prosh notes to the editor. Letter to the editor. Based on what? Dearest editor, my handsome grandson has recently been uttering the phrase based in response to an exciting piece of news. For example, I will convey what I have just baked some cookies. 
Daniel, I have just baked some cookies. Come, come. To which he would reply, based. Tepid regards, Grain Mush Sherry. I'm Esoteric Rock Legend, Ronald Rocker. And I'm here to give you the Prosh Horoscopes, because that's just what I do. Hey, <laughs> Aries. Good things come to those who wait. Thank fuck you have a fuse like a hand grenade. You're a demanding self-entitled little shit with no impulse control and boy is that gonna cost ya. Get ready for a year of empty bank accounts, bad breakups, and awful Tinder dates because you've hit the shitty jackpot. Who knows, maybe even a prison stint if you really try. Good things come to those who wait. Well, there's no better place to wait down than in C-Block, you unsociable, pathetic creep. Taros, they're not going to take you back, mate. And you know why? Because you're an uncompromising, possessive asshole. One compromise, that's it. One compromise on literally anything, and things would have been fine, but you wouldn't let it go. You kept having a meltdown over the fucking brand of eggs. How do you function? How do you get up in the morning knowing you going to ruin everyone's day? I'd give you $50 a day to stay home so you don't ruin every remaining friendship you've left. But you won't because you deserve everything you bring upon yourself. Gemini. When I get up in this morning I made breakfast and coffee, showered and shaved, dressed and headed to work. The whole thing took me less than an hour and at no point did I have a meltdown. That's how normal people get up in the morning. What are you doing? Fulling the fucking pieces over which brand of cereal they have? You're not fun and quirky because you need the help of 14 group chats to pick up a shirt to wear every day? You're a pain in the ass. Just flip a fucking coin next time. It's never gonna be any worse than your dumb shit indecision. Cancer. I simply cannot. Not today. Except you can, actually. If you're capable of shifting your focus away from yourself for five seconds, you would see that the common denominator in every friendship drama you've got swept up in is you. You're lazy. Can-do attitude and unbridled Karenism makes everyone around you painfully miserable. You might as well settle into your favorite comforter in your lounge room with a box of wine now because that's what's in store for your 40s and 50s when your shitty personality is meant that even your cats have abandoned you. Me? Yow. Leo, you're the Daria figure. Quiet, unassuming, sarcastic and sardonic. Except you're not. Daria is beloved and well liked and you're just a snide little gremlin. You're not countercultural or above these idiots. You're just a dick. Face it. Every time you open your mouth, you're a screwed. Every good thing in your life has only come about because you kept your mouth shut. My advice is to take a vow of silence for 2021. It might be the worst year of your life, but it'd be the best year of everyone else's. Virgo. Everyone tells you not to be so hard on yourself. You're only human. Nobody's perfect. But honestly, the average dropkick is doing better than you are. You spent all your time finding the flaws in yourself and others, but have spent exactly zero time working on them. With such flawless track records, I'm sure this year is definitely gonna be your year. Buy yourself some live, laugh, love signs because all you're accomplishing this year is disappointing everyone around you. Libra, hey, that's my year. You got a long list of enemies, <laughs> that I do. Everyone who has ever wronged you, or accidentally inconvenienced you, or has been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Look, that one scientist in the iron soup really pissed me off, I'm telling you. You walked around with the worst version of everyone you've ever met. Constantly fantasizing about how today's the day that you're finally gonna snap, but then they'll respect you, but deep down you know you never will. You're too cowardly to stand up for your own family, let alone your boss. And you definitely don't have what it takes to stand up to yourself. Work on your grossly inflated sense of self-importance, and maybe... Your life will marginally improve. <laughs> it's too true. <laughs>
Scorpio! People aren't inherently evil. They are capable of great acts of compassion, sincerity, nobility, and self-sacrifice. But not you. Face it. Every time everyone shows you the remotest sense of kindness, you start getting ready to betray them. Is your partner cheating on you? Yup. Would they if you weren't such an unhinged asshole? Probably not. If you want to succeed this year, give up on your friends, family, and love, and pursue a career in law. At least there, your conniving manipulations won't seem so damn out of place. Sagittarius. Well, you told your parents to stick it, that you had dreams, you were going to be a shining star. How's that working out for you, sunshine? You're a washed up disappointment, no different from your parents, except less successful. At least they brought a house and had a family. Your Richter scale tantrum is going to be the family shame for years to come. So good luck coming back to them now. Just give up on your dreams and join the rat race before your violent escapism gets you killed. Capricorn. Sardonic. Fatalistic. Pathetic. That's what your friends think of you. Although perhaps friends is too strong a word here. You treat everyone who gets even remotely close to you like a trauma dumping ground and give nothing back. You're constantly burning through new people while venting about how much the fallout from the last group of people has affected you. Maybe you could face your own problems, but face it, you're not going to. You're going to marry some poor schmuck who's too polite to call you out and emotionally drain them for life. I'd like to say hello to my wife, Karen. You're a star. Aquarius, I love you. Three words you have never spoken to another human being in your life, you heartless shell of a human being. You spend every night cradling your pillow, trying to imagine what contact with another human might feel like. But the sad, cold reality is that you never will know. You're never going to be likable enough to look at, let alone date. You might as well buy yourself that waifu body pillow you've been eyeing for a while. It's not like you have any dignity left to save. Again, shout out to my wife, Karen. Your feathers are extra nice in your sack today. Pisces, you're going to get hit by a bus. Fuck you. This has been the Prosh Horoscopes with me, a generic esoteric rock star. Good night.